In this episode of CBH, we'll be discussing how many of the Marvel superheroes from the 1960s or 1970s derive their names from older characters of the same company, whether it was under Timely in the 1940s, Atlas in the 1950s, or their monster period under independent news distribution in the late 1950s to 1962. The relevance of independent news distribution as distributor was explained previously in the 1957 Atlas Implosion episode. The first character name we're discussing is the most popular character in Marvel, and that is Spider-Man. Although he was co-created by Steve Ditko and Stan Lee in 1962, the name Spider-Man was previously used by the company when it was referred to as Atlas in 1954 in Uncanny Tales 26. This story featured a scientist who raised and mutated gigantic monstrous spiders with the hope of taking over the world. Although the plot had nothing to do with our friendly neighborhood wall crawler, the name technically wasn't new. In Tales to Astonish 7 1960, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee portrayed a monster called The Thing, one of many of their independent news monster age era. At this point, they focused a lot of comics on monsters before they felt that superheroes would be fair game. DC had sued Fawcett for using their Captain Marvel character in the past, so it's no surprise monsters would be experimented with as far as popularity and using a great deal of names that would later be used on super characters. When I say portrayed by Kirby and Lee, it is meant that Kirby penciled it and Lee wordsmithed it. As far as who originated it, I'm keeping that out because a character is both the visual and the name and that debate can go on for days. When Jack and Stan ushered in their Marvel Age by starting Fantastic Four 1 1961, they introduced another monster type superhero also called The Thing shown on the cover. Although they retconned the Human Torch to retool him into Johnny Storm, they used the power of the invisible Scarlet O'Neil and Plastic Man into their characters, but fashioned the perfect monster superhero gateway character, The Thing, reusing the name. Another fun character from Tales to Astonish 9 1960 was a Godzilla type lizard monster, Droom. Who came up with these names? That's tough to answer. Maybe it was Stan Lee, the character designs, most likely from the penciler Jack Kirby. However, it is tough to be certain who came up with these monster names. The name Droom would be later used again, pretty soon, after in the creation of the company's first Silver Age mystical hero, Dr. Droom. Dr. Droom predates Dr. Strange and was created by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee as a prototype mystic character, whom was formally discussed in the Golden Age to Marvel Silver Age episode. He went to Tibet before Doctor Strange and was transformed into a crime-fighting psychic mystic. This character didn't do as well as their later characters and was forgotten for a while and brought back into Marvel continuity as Doctor Druid. Speaking of forgotten Marvel Silver Age characters, there is another one named after an Atlas Age monster creature. In 1954, Men's Adventure 26 showcases a transformed creature called Gorilla Man by the great Robert Q. Sale. This Atlas era Gorilla Man would be later used in What If Number 9, 1978, and the later Modern Agents of Atlas series. However, in 1962, Tales to Astonish 28, there was a transformed scientist hero monster that was given the same name, Gorilla Man, presented by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. This character was even revisited again in issue 30, however that was the last we heard of him. Imagine if they kept Dr. Droom and Gorilla Man and put them into the Avengers in the 1960s. I guess some things weren't meant to be. In 1960, Tales of Suspense 10 contained a large monster called Cyclops by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. This Cyclops was frozen and brought back to life by explorers. However, what makes this name interesting is that it was reused. The name Cyclops was used again in Kirby and Lee's X-Men 1 1963 on their repressed leader with a univisor. This mutant superhero contained elements of the Golden Age hero, the Comet, which was discussed in a previous episode, and it was a natural fit to reuse the monster Cyclops name for this character. In 1960, Jack and Stan created a monster in Tales of Suspense 9 1960 from the fifth dimension. Again, these monster characters were residuals of the 1950s sci-fi monster movie phenomenon, however, this name would be used again. In 1964, Fantastic Four 30, the name Diablo would be used for a new villain that would fight the fabulous foursome. Even though he is generally regarded as a B-list character, his name preceded him 
and was a reused item from their previous monster comics. As far as villains go, there's a monster on the cover of Strange Tales 84 in 1961 with the name Magneto, presented by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. This was featured in the Jack Kirby X-Men episode of CBH and also fits well here in this presentation. This Magneto is a monster that can levitate entire cities. This name would be used again in another co-creation of Jack Kirby and Stan Lee on the cover of Uncanny X-Men 1 1963 for their number one arch nemesis Magneto, the mutant master of magnetism during their superhero Marvel Silver Age. In 1960, Jack and Stan created the Molten Man Thing and placed him on the cover of Tales of Suspense 7, another of their lava type men, but this type in the form of a monster that caused the local townspeople to run for their lives. This name appears to have been split up and used for a couple other Marvel Age characters. The first one is the Molten Man from Ditko and Lee's Amazing Spider-Man 28 1965. This issue sports a memorable, densely black cover and shows the ominous B-list villain nicely. The second half of Molten Man Thing would be split off and the name Man Thing would be used for a swamp-based Marvel monster anti-hero in the early 1970s. Here's a cover for the humorously titled Giant Size Man-Thing 1 1974, sporting big pages. Man-Thing was an interesting character because he was created before DC Swamp Thing and would be positioned as generally a monster with a good heart, fighting other creatures as a troubled anti-hero which was a trend of that decade, as discussed in the Eight Ages of Comic Books episode. In 1960, Journey into Mystery 62 showcased a scientifically created monster by Kirby and Lee on the cover. He was furry with soft facial features much like the Golden Age character The Heap, who was generally referred to as a Hulk at times. The Heap-Hulk relationship was previously discussed in the Golden Age to Marvel Silver Age CBH episode. The name Hulk originally placed on this monster would be used later in 1962, and the cover of Incredible Hulk 1, also by Kirby and Lee. Scientist Bruce Banner, as augmented by science to become this monster anti-hero, and his creative origins were discussed in the Jack Kirby Hulk CBH episode. Similar to the thing, he would be a merged entity between monster and super anti-hero. In 1961, there is a gray monster called Electro on the cover of Tales of Suspense 13 by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. The name Electro is fascinating in the history of Marvel Comics because not only was this name used for this IND era monster comic, but it was also used earlier in 1954 in Captain America Comics number 78. This Atlas era cover by John Romita Sr. showcases a communist supervillain in the failed commie smasher run of this series. This Electro was spelled with a C and he did have electric based superpowers. This era of Captain America is not seen as the real Steve Rogers due to his punch first and ask questions later anti-communist Cold War mentality that Marvel is currently demonizing. The name Electro was also used during the timely era of Marvel Comics history in Marvel Mystery Comics 4 1940 by Steve Dahlman of Electro the Marvel of the Age. This Electro was a marvelous robot created by Professor Zog. The name Electro applies to this blog because that name was used for the fourth time by this company during the Marvel Age in 1964 in Amazing Spider-Man 9 for Steve Ditko and Stanley's character. Electro. This supervillain was electrically powered and enjoyed using his powers to rob banks, which was common for villains of those days. So the name Electro was used during all four eras of Marvel's history. Timely, Atlas, IND, Monster Age, and Marvel Age. 1961 Journey into Mystery 70 features a character by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee named the Sandman, a sand monster found by some inquisitive humans. Again, the same pattern of a monster name in this IND monster era was reused in a supervillain. In 1963, the name was used again for Steve Ditko and Stan Lee's supervillain, the Sandman, who was an enemy of Spider-Man introduced in issue 4. This supervillain is very memorable and was one of many rogues galleries created by this team which thankfully included Steve Ditko. In 1961, Tales to Astonish 16, there is a monster called Thor, portrayed by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, which waited a million years to destroy the world. His head was fashioned after the Easter Island Stone Men, whom Kirby revisited even as early as his DC days in the late 1950s. In 1962, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee would create the Mighty Thor, who would fight aliens from Saturn, who were also fashioned after the Easter Island Stone Men. We discussed the roots of Thor, the Easter Island Stone Men, and the Thunder God fighting aliens from Saturn in the Jack Kirby Thor CBH episode. What is important here is that the name in Stone Men was reused in the Mighty Thor's first appearance in 
Journey into Mystery 83. In Tales to Astonish 17, 1961, a scientist by the name of Van Doom creates a new creature using monster-enriched science, who's depicted as a mad scientist by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee in this issue. In 1962, Jack Kirby and Stan Lee would depict another mad scientist by the name of Von Doom as the armored arch-villain of the Fantastic Four, Doctor Doom. There is no plot relation between the two characters, but it is another fun example of how the monster era names were carried over and placed onto new superhero or supervillains in the Marvel Silver Age. In Journey into Mystery 82, 1962, there was a large insect-based monster named the Scorpion, portrayed here by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. Although this monster was fairly just filler for this issue with no real company relevance, its name Scorpion would be used again for a famous supervillain in Amazing Spider-Man 20, 1964. This character was created by Steve Ditko and Stan Lee and became a recurring villain, fighting Spidey for decades. And it is a fun example of how monster era names were reused again for superheroes or supervillains. In 1961, Tales of Suspense 14 had a monster on the cover, an artificial creation called the Colossus, which would cause the local people to flee for their lives. Portrayed by Jack Kirby and wordsmithed by Stan Lee, this name would also not go to waste. In 1975, this name would be used again onto the Russian Marvel superhero in the all-new, all-different Giant Size X-Men 1. Much like the Man-Thing, this name wouldn't be used until the 1970s by Len Wein and Dave Cockrum for this hero who was too noble and shiny to be considered a tortured monster, but rather a shining, noble, mutant, metallic knight whose power manifested in a transformative burst of energy. In discussing how the names of these pre-Marvel monster characters were transplanted onto the buttoning Marvel Silver Age superheroes, it is natural to want to see the monthly transition from one to another. Going by cover dates, November 1961 to May 1962, The Fantastic Four was the only superhero book for the company at this time, while the other titles were still going pretty hard for monster sci-fi. FF was a bi-monthly book, while the other books were still monthly, so FF was a successful experiment by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, which did well enough for the company to eventually drop from its monster comics and focus and build its buttoning, super-powered Marvel Universe, and hence reuse the monster names. These new super characters with reused names were a tremendous success, except in the case of Droom and Gorilla Man. All those monster titles eventually changed to superhero books and the Marvel Age would begin. Difficult to prove who transferred the names over, but that was probably Stan Lee as editor, or Martin Goodman as publisher, overseeing the entire line of comics, or Jack Kirby as as visual creator who remembered old names of old characters. As far as their origination, it's difficult to prove who created those names, and that is left to historical speculation. Cheers.